¿Puedes decir bienvenido a México? Buenos días, good morning, day two, Mexico City. Right now we are in Condesa, on Calle Amsterdam, and we have an amazing day planned. The whole day we're gonna be exploring Mexico City's long history of art, but first it's breakfast time and there's a really famous spot right around the corner that has a huge Shh. line. We're gonna show you when we get there. Supposedly, people will sit here and wait for like upwards of an hour, but it's worth it because these tortas, tortas are basically like sandwiches, and these ones are filled with chilaquiles, chips like tortilla chips that have been like soaked in a beautiful sauce. Gracias. Whoa. Beans, bread, chicken, chilaquiles, a little bit of cream. Oh. Well, we've just demolished two of those tortas. Super deliciosos. And um, now we're gonna switch gears a little bit. We're gonna dive into the world of street art here in Condesa. Muralism has a really long history here in Mexico. It goes back to Diego Rivera and before that. So we're gonna go talk to Genero and Alejandro and learn a bit more about what's going on in the world of street art in Mexico City. We are Street Art Chilango and we're here at the Condesa. We're standing in front of a stormtrooper that we did uh, last year. Back in 2013, we decided to open this webpage called Street Art Chilango just to index all the street art in Mexico City by using the hashtag Street Art Chilango, uploading it to Instagram. Just tell us about how street art got started here in Mexico City. Yeah, well, it has a lot of history back to the last century with Diego Rivera, Chiqueiros, and all the rock star artists that actually traveled the world painting and they call it muralism. In the last, I don't know, seven years, the street art hype around the world has created like a sense that we Mexicans, we knew about. We feel really proud of it, and we feel it's part of our Mexican ideology. We found two stormtroopers over there, but it looks like we've just stumbled upon the entire Imperial Army. These guys not only curate street art, but also create a lot of their own uh, with local artists. Uh, so we're walking through Condesa. This is a really beautiful neighborhood. It's a lot of old Art Nouveau houses. I'll show you more in a bit. Treats is Leia paying the parking. That's instead of her putting like the USB drive into R2D2 with the message for Obi-Wan Kenobi, she's paying the parking fees. We created this one called Open Your Heart and we just finished it like a couple of weeks ago. Okay, so the name of this artist is Curiot and he's Mexican and paints Mexican themed murals. What do you see in this one, Alex? It's a god. We chose gods and it's a tribe. Uh -huh. Yeah, listen in the desert. It looks pretty psychedelic. Do they have like psychedelic experiences in their tribe as well? Peyote. Peyote. Yeah. This indigenous group from Mexico, they live in the desert and they use peyote, which is a type of cactus that if you eat, you have a hallucinogenic experience. So Curiot has kind of harnessed that. I love the colors, like the colors in Mexico are so vibrant. It makes it way more different than the street art you might see in Europe or something. Okay guys, that was super cool, but now we're gonna switch gears up a bit and go find the original Mexican street artists, which are the muralists, Diego Rivera and all of his colleagues. So long story short, 100 years ago, Mexico went through a revolution uh, and they brought in a progressive government that contracted Rivera and other artists at the time to create these huge public works of art with two goals. One, to educate the illiterate through art and two, to create a national identity. So we're gonna go check out the Palacio de Bellas Artes which is where some of his most famous works are, including Man, Controller of the Universe. Okay, so now we are inside the Palacio de Bellas Artes, which was originally built as an opera house. 
This is cool. Gotham City vibes. I'm Bruce Wayne. I live in Gotham City, the Daily Mexico City, and I'm here for the art. So behind me is Rivera's most famous painting, Man, Controller of the Universe. If you've seen the movie Frida, then you know the story behind it. Basically, he was contracted by Rockefeller uh, in New York, who was the epitome of a capitalist, and Rivera was a communist. And he included Vladimir Lenin, Karl Marx, and Trotsky in the painting, which of course the Rockefellers did not really enjoy. So they forced him to tear down the painting in New York, and he came back to Mexico City and recreated it here. This is like the golden era of muralism, and the power in these pieces is just incredible. In that time when a lot of people in Mexico were illiterate, this was a really powerful force for, for creating that identity, creating that education that, that didn't exist until that time. Okay, well, interesting morning. Definitely a really cool building, but we're gonna transition into a much smaller, more intimate place. The home of Frida Kahlo, who was Diego Rivera's wife, lover, complicated story, but um, interesting woman. Yes, and we're gonna be up with another interesting woman named Fernanda Caballero, a local Instagrammer, so see you in a bit. And now we're at Frida Kahlo's house. The Blue House with Fernanda. <laughs> Tell us what you do. I'm a yoga teacher, but I travel the world around like these two guys. Yeah, and she's got a killer Instagram account, so check it out as well. Link in the info box. So this is the Blue House. This is where Frida was born. This is where she was living when she got in that famous accident. If you've seen the opening scene of the movie Frida, she recovered here, started painting here, later married Diego Rivera, whose works we just saw. And when they got married, they bought the house from her family and lived here together. This is one of my favorite places in the city because you can really get a sense of her passion and how much she suffered through her beautiful yet chaotic life. Gardens are super nice. There's this, you know, there's a, what is that called? Pyramid? There we go. There's a pyramid, <laughs> there's like snake heads, there's an Olmec head back there hiding in the garden. You can feel, you know, the artistic inspiration. Okay guys, well we can't film inside of the house, so bear with us, I'll give you a little photo montage of Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera's home, kitchen, bedrooms, and art space. It's pretty interesting, you know, seeing this place and like walking through the space that they actually lived and worked in. Get a real feel for what life would have been like and can really kind of like understand their inspiration and things that happened in their lives and what shaped kind of their worldview but pretty interesting place, for sure. Tripping right now. Do we take mezcal or mezcaline? Because I'm it's tripping. weird. People get down in like parks here. Like everybody is just macking each other's faces off, just making out so hard. Public parks is fair game. A lot of people come here to dominguear, which is like to pass a nice domingo, a nice Sunday on the weekend. We are going to emborrachar un poco because we are going to have some mezcal. And then we're gonna comer because you cannot drink without eating. And I don't know where we're going to comer or what we're going to comer, but guess what? It's gonna be good. My name is Marco Mendes, and we are now in Coyoacán, in the Corazón de Maguey restaurant and the Scaleria. We are the 
Mezcal Catedral of Mexico. The tequila and mezcal is the same. The tequila is only from Jalisco. The mezcal is produced in 20 states in Mexico, but the mezcal is a protagonist of the towns. When someone born, the people drink mezcal. Someone die, people drink mezcal. When you are in the wedding, mezcal. When you are divorced, mezcal too, no? I got a feeling we're gonna walk down here like the three amigos. Hashtag. Or as they say in Spanish, de cuatro patas. I'm not a big tequila guy, because when I was younger I had a bad tequila experience, you know what I mean? But mezcal is totally different. It's smooth, you don't need a chaser, and when you exhale it's just smoky and delicious. Si, sí, senor. Mezcal is supposed to be the medicine of the soul. We've got a good drink in our hand, some good friends, and we're in a beautiful place. And I think I'm like in Mexico City more and more with each passing minute. Salud! Yes! Yes, yeah, salud! Cheers! Cheers! Okay. Rey Mysterio, si? Sí. Vlogging in a Mexican okay. wrestling mask. I'm not that coming here. It's been a fun day. Guys, thanks for watching. If you like the video, you know what to do. Thumbs up, subscribe to Baggy Brothers, and uh, share with your friends. That's it. In the meantime, remember to stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you guys on the road or in the ring. Get Buenos dias, damas y caballeros. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in Mexico City. We are in the heart of it. We are in the Zocalo, the symbolic center of the entire country and the place where the city was founded. Basically, over the next couple days, we're going to do Mexico City in depth. We're going to go from the roots of the city 